every day is Boxing Day at High Ash Farm and this time of the year um, when we've had some rain and I can't work on the fields I get my trusty little chainsaw out and make some extra bird boxes. There's well over 600 nesting boxes of various sizes here at High Ash Farm and this morning in front of us we have three blanks these are just sections of tree trunks that fell down last autumn in the gales so they're pretty well seasoned already and special wood because they're made out of larch which is quite a long lasting uh, so the one on the left that will eventually become a kestrel box or one for little owls the smaller one in the centre that we're looking at will become blue tit or great tit or even nuthatch if I put it out in the woodlands and the one on the right, the slightly taller one, that's around about 12 inches or 300 millimetres in diameter and getting on for a metre tall I'm going to make a sparrow box out of that this morning each box only takes a maximum of 30 minutes to make and I have my trusty little chainsaw so I'm just going to lay that on the ground and take the first step which is to cut the top and the bottom off the log and then I will take the face off and hollow it out and put it all back together and make a special three nest box so it's a triple nest box for house sparrows so here we go helmet on first of all safety comes first here we go There we are, nice and easy so far. And so the right hand box has had the top and bottom taken off and I've marked those so you know which goes where. The top one has got T-I-N-S, which is top inside and the base has got bins, bottom inside. <laughs> because it's easy to get in the muddle and they've also been marked with the front and back so they will fit back on the top and the bottom of that log absolutely perfectly so there we are we're ready to take the center out of the box and this is where the magic happens <laughs> we hope so next stage is to get a chisel and i will just go down and to the workshop get a chisel and a medium-sized hammer and then we will pop the center out as if by magic uh, because i'm going down the grain this time and you saw how easy it was for the chainsaw to cut longitudinally down the log and that's the way we're going with the final cut but i do that with a chisel a giant chisel rather than a chainsaw so just for safety reasons right see you in a minute Excellent. This is where the magic happens now. Um, wood has no strength long ways down its grain. So as you can see I've taken two cuts out of each side leaving at least 50 millimeters of wood thickness at any point in the box including the top and the bottom. So this long-term box is going to be really well insulated it's mimicking a hollow tree completely i've just popped the chisel into the top uh, and started to knock it in 
and uh, I'm either going to look like the village idiot <laughs> and it will split off in the wrong place but hopefully as with hundreds of other boxes I've done this should pop out at any moment here we go absolute magic there is my hollowed out box and now the next stage is to make it into three tiers um, and so each one will be about 10 inches in height and um, that's well over 200 millimeters which is plenty of height for house sparrows and then we'll drill some holes in the face as well which is also lovely and thick and perfect for the birds like house sparrows or tree sparrows to nest in and it will go somewhere in the farmyard itself so there we are see you again in a few minutes when we'll be putting the top and the bottom back on and the stages in place and you'll be able to see those excellent it's all going well so far <laughs> excellent the next stage now we've got the log hollowed out is to make some entrance holes and i've put some white chalk marks on the front of the log uh, ready to drill out so here we go this is the next stage and we're going to make the holes around 40 millimeters diameter Perfect. You can then see the holes ready uh, to, I'll file them out with a rasp in a moment or two to make sure they're perfectly smooth and round, ready for the birds to go in. Right, I've just got to finish rasping the three holes to make sure there's no snags for the birds to go in and out and you can see them here we're going to make three nest boxes and then shortly i'll cut some divisions to fit in between uh, the boxes are about seven inches wide about 160 millimeters wide uh, for the birds to be in and they're quite sizable as you'll see when i turn the box around so here we go and we have some some rat company just come rat has just popped in to see what i'm up to the farmyard's busy it's early morning and lots and lots of people are around now oh rat yeah good boy i'll just put you down here so you're out of the way good boy There we are, the holes are good now, they're nice and smooth all the way around. I've checked them with my finger and that's important not to have any snags in there because those holes are going to be in use for about 10 years or so. Right, two small sections of wood to make the divisions uh, inside the box. So quick bit with the handsaw now.
there we are we've cut two inch thick pieces of treated timber one of the old off cuts from the building i hope the actual nest box isn't going to cost anything at all apart from a few nails and some mastic which we'll be using in a few minutes right i'm going to turn the box around now and show you how i install the little sections of wood to divide individual nest boxes up the top from the middle from the bottom here we go There we are, you can see how fast it all is. I've cut two little tiny slots in, so no need for nails or mastic. And now you can start to see the beginnings of the triple nest box that we're making here for the house sparrows, all taking shape very nicely now. Now, the next stage is to put the front back on. And, oh, I've just got a, um, air ambulance helicopter going over on a early morning trip to sit pick somebody up perhaps in South Norfolk. A little bit noisy for a moment and I'll just turn the box over now and we'll pop the front, the original front back on and that will now become the back of the box and then I'll put a little bit of mastic in that to make sure it's completely watertight and that will be the bit that fits on the tree so you'll see how it all goes back together like a jigsaw puzzle and then inside those little nest boxes you'll see I'm going to put a little bit of wood, nice wood shavings um, to provide a little bit of insulation for overwinter roosting and the beginnings of some nesting material for next year. Here we go. Magic. There we are. I'll just line that up perfectly and a uh, little bit of mastic along each edge to provide extra waterproofing. And then we'll put the top and the bottom back on and voila we will have a nest box ready to erect in one of the oak trees lower down in the farmyard a perfect almost natural nest box excellent the rear of the box is now masticked in place there's no need to use any nails or screws to hold that on uh, because the top and the bottom are going to do all the work for us you can actually see in places the timber is four inches thick the top and the bottom are at minimum of two inches that's 50 mil thick and so the box is really well insulated and you can hardly see where the front was cut off. I'll just run my finger down there so you can actually see it. So now the secret of bins and tins will be revealed <laughs> because bins, this is the bottom inside and this will go on first. I've already put a few shavings inside. So away we go with it, just a few nails and it will hold it all in place. So if the box ever does need cleaning out in future years, it's just a simple five minute job to take the top off and pop your hand in. The, the front will then come off and uh, you can clean all the boxes out nice and easily because hygiene, particularly with sparrows, is quite important. So here we go, top and bottom, bins and tins.
there we are nearly complete and i found an old plastic lid oh, rat my terrible terrier had to butt in on this occasion i found an old plastic lid uh, from a feed container on the farm the perfect size for the top just to give it a little bit more all-weather protection as it's up in an oak tree and that just helps keep the whole box nice and dry so there we are a perfect nest box with three nest holes in um, the top one is fractionally larger than the other two the bottom two are 40 millimeters the top one's about 44 millimeters which is just large enough <sighs> you wait till i catch that dog which is just large enough for a starling so there we are and one inch beneath each nest hole in a moment i shall finish this video uh, will be a little perch about an inch and a half out um rat thank you very much that's quite that is that is quite enough he's just jealous that i'm talking to the microphone and not him you wait till i catch you <laughs> um so there we are that's a perfect absolutely perfect nest box uh you can install it in woodland uh, for smaller birds but the favorite for this particular one is i'm um, overflowing with house sparrows we've got well over a hundred and um have you quite finished um we've got well over a hundred sparrows and i'll in the next video i'll just pop the camera out on one of the tracks and you can see what happens at this time of the year many bird species flock together and um, just enjoy late summer and autumn as they build up larger and larger flocks through the air so there we are let me just catch this dog and we'll do a little pose next to this wonderful bird box come here you dim demonic dog Have you quite finished? <laughs> no kissing. <laughs> you terrible, terrible dog. What's all that noise for? Right, say bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. <laughs> Dear.